I think the question is, do we really have a handle on this? On Friday, we had former Ambassador Nick Burns and former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Evelyn Farkas of the Atlantic Council mm. on the show, and they both talked about the current administration not having a coherent strategy for Syria. Let's take a look at what they said, and then we'll get your reaction on the other side. I think the Obama team has done very well in trying to retrain the Iraqi army and put air power there, but we've been very risk averse in Syria in terms of aiding in a big way rebel groups and putting our own people on the ground. So th these are big questions for us to think about. Dr. Farkas, do you agree that we don't have a strategy to defeat ISIS? Yes, unfortunately, and I, and I really want to go back also to the Syria point because you guys mentioned at the top of this segment, you know, this new, they're calling it strategy, I don't think it's a strategy. They need to find an angle in to change the dynamic, and one of the angles is the humanitarian, but they're not talking about it. I mean, today there was an op-ed, you know, nine million people in Syria are essentially starving. Right. Over half a million are, are under siege. You know, that's in addition to the people who are being bombed barrel bombed by, right. by the regime, etc. So I think there's a humanitarian urgency. We need to do something. All right, let's have you respond, Tony Blinken, because all of this obviously connected, even on a safe haven for the refugees. Why isn't there one? So look, two things going on here. First, there's the fight against ISIL, and we do have a very clear strategy, and we're driving it. We're trying to take away the core in Iraq and Syria. That's what's drawing people in. That's the way they get resources, and that's where we're having real success. 50% of the territory they controlled a year ago is gone in Iraq, 20% in Syria. Second, we're trying to cut off all the networks, the foreign fighters, the financing, the propaganda. There, too, against every measure, we're having a real impact. And finally, we're trying to deal with the affiliates, groups in other countries that are waving the ISIL banner. And there, too, we're having success in Libya where they said they're going to basically have their backup caliphate insert where they're gathered, we have them surrounded. So against all those measures, the strategy is working. Separate from that is this awful civil war in Syria. Right. And we're trying to bring that to a close. These things end in one of three ways. Either one side wins, and that's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, in fact, Assad has taken a major, major hit. 100,000 soldiers killed over the last few years. 80% of his GDP gone. He's still standing. One side or the other is not going to win. Or they exhaust themselves, and unfortunately, they don't seem to be near the point of exhaustion, or there is some kind of solution that's imposed from the outside, and that's what we're working on, including with Russia. So, uh, Jim Woolsey, Bill Clinton's former CIA director, called the refusal or the lack of will to enforce the red line that President Obama drew in Syria one of the biggest foreign policy blunders in American history. He called the Iran mm. deal the second. Um, no Republican. He was Bill Clinton's CIA director. Do you, and I, I've heard you say success four times this morning, do you, do you all sit around in private and take any responsibility for the morass that is this country's Middle East policy, or is it all externally forced? Externally. Mm -hmm. and, and do you feel that you've strengthened Putin's hand by letting him go in and essentially weaponize refugees? Mm -hmm. We take responsibility every single day, and you've heard the president talk to this. I think there's frustration across the board at this horrific civil war in Syria that's taking so many lives. But did lives. you create it? I don't think we created it. I think but, but, but you, the red line was drawn. If Assad used chemical weapons on his citizens, there was going to be a different action. Assad used mm. chemical weapons on his citizens. We all saw the horrific let's, images. And so let's be clear about happened. that. Let's be clear about the red Please. line. You're exactly right. The red line was about Assad's use of chemical weapons. Then we said that needs to stop. And then the president said, we're prepared to take military action to send a strong message to Assad that this needs to stop. Mm -hmm. And we started to work on that. And then we were able, without firing a single shot, mm -hmm. to be far more effective with this deal that took away the vast bulk of their right, chemical weapons. Right, but then Putin went in and, and bombed. I mean, so, so I, I know what happened, mm -hmm. but, but do you not feel that strengthening Putin's hand and giving Putin free, free reign over the airspace over Syria worsened the very crises you talk about? This is, this is one bag you do not want to be left holding. Putin is in a very difficult so situation in, Af in Afghanistan. No, the question is, how do we end this? How do we bring this to an end? And as I said, the most effective way to do that is to get together with other countries that have a major role in supporting the different actors in Syria and getting them to work on a settlement together. Here's Russia's situation. They are now dealing with propping up Assad, who controls basically a third of his country. Mm -hmm. He is under siege. 
if this continues, if the civil war continues and even gets worse, which is what's going to happen if there's not a diplomatic resolution, then all of the outside patriots are going to throw in more and more weapons, more and more lethal weapons. Mm -hmm. Those weapons are going to be used against Assad and against the Russians. They're going to go to extremist groups like Nusra and Arar al-Sham. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, 15 percent of Russia's population is Muslim, Sunni Muslim. Russia is now allied with Assad, with Hezbollah, with Iran, mm -hmm. with Shia Muslim. They're as being the enemies of Sunnis. There was a big wake-up call last week. Those bombers in, awful bombers in Turkey. Mm -hmm. Turkey suffered terrible attacks, Ankara and Istanbul. Where were they from? Apparently from Chechnya. Right. This is what, where Putin actually made his first success in, in crushing this uprising in Chechnya, Dagestan, uh, Muslim-dominated territories in, the, uh, in Russia. If this continues, these folks are going to rise up again. So he has a very strong incentive 